the Sky DVG-1 RD. Let's check it out. Sky was founded in 2003 by Joe Roebuck. Uh, so for the past 20 years, they've been making very budget-friendly handguns. Started out with the CPX, and it was a long double-action trigger pull. Just to be honest with you guys, I wasn't really a big fan. Um, I liked the pistol. It was very lightweight. It was very reasonable handgun. But that long trigger pull just makes it more difficult, uh, especially to get accuracy to get on target. Some guys love it. And, you know, I noticed when I did my first review, there was a lot of people that really loved the Sky. And there's some that have had other experiences, but that's with any handgun company. Now they've come out with the DVG-1, uh, and it is a striker fire pistol. It's their first. And we did a review on it about a year and a half ago. To be honest with you, I was very impressed with the DVG-1. Uh, and it's funny that DVG actually stands for David versus Goliath. Uh, one of the things in the philosophies of Joe Roebuck is that he wanted to provide a good quality solid pistol for a reasonable price. And that's one of the things that he has accomplished. Uh, they sell up to a thousand handguns a day out of their factory down in Daytona Beach, Florida. And they've sold well over a million handguns. Now with the DVG-1, it's really taken it up a notch. Uh, the quality's better. Um, I love now that they have the Red Dot Ready, which this is the RD model. And so this gives you a Red Dot option. And there's a lot of other upgrades that they made with the DVG-1. But one of the big things about Sky is a state-of-the-art facility. But they make a lot of their tools because Joe Roebuck had a tool and die making background. So they are very particular about making a good quality product, taking a lot of steps out, because of their tooling and because of the way they do things to make this a more reasonable firearm. And guys, while we're seeing firearm prices go through the roof, it's good to have options. And Sky's really bringing that to the market. Now the DVG R1 RD was part of the holiday gift guide from GetZone.com. And they connected us with Sky Firearms, which sent the Sky DGR1 RD for this review. The Sky DVG-1 RD, this has just been one of those pistols that is budget friendly, yet to me it makes a great option for those you know, who really need a handgun and they don't have five, six hundred dollars. Uh, you know, being a David, we have the Goliath right here, <laughs> which is smaller. Uh, but with the SIG P365, I mean, it's one of the most popular handguns out of the market, but it's a SIG and it's considerably more expensive. Uh, and so, you know, it gives us another option. Now, first thing let's do is just go ahead and double check. We've got a 10 round magazine. Uh, it is a standard size magazine, and then we'll check the chamber and it's empty. Uh, one of the things about this handgun is it's honestly about the size of a Glock 26, but a little bit smaller, a little thinner in the slide, a little thinner in the grip. And so it really comes in between the 26 and the 365. Uh, one of the things about the P365, though, is that it just makes a very small, thin handgun. So we're going to look, and guys, there's not really a whole lot of difference, but there is a difference. I mean, it, it is a little bit thicker, and, it, you know, this makes it a little bit easier to conceal. Uh, but this is what started the whole thing with the Micro 9s. Uh, and so with the subcompacts that, we're, that we've seen over the past few years, uh, you know, they're just kind of falling a little bit out of favor. But the one big thing about this handgun, again, is the price. Now, this retails with the optics cuts for $299. Uh, without the optics cuts, it's $289. Uh, 
And then the CPX models are running about 249 retail. So market price could be a lot less. Uh, you know, one of the things about this, when you go into your gun shop, this is going to be one of the most reasonable firearms that's in the case. Maybe aside from the high point, which <laughs> that's a whole nother animal. Uh, and it's a lot larger. But there has been some cuts with the grip to make it a little more ergonomic, a little smaller. Uh, it has really nice texturing. Uh, all the way in the back and the front. Of course, you have your finger grooves. Now, there are some of the CPX models now that have come out that they've done away with the finger grooves. And personally, I really like just that smooth front. And that's just me, because sometimes these grooves don't necessarily fit your hand. But what's funny is, is this does fit my hand. It has this small little pad right here for me to naturally place my thumb. Then here at the front, we have this notch area right here, and this makes it excellent for recoil management. So I can take my thumb, place it right there, and then when I'm firing the pistol, it gives me more control over the gun. Uh, so that's just definitely a big plus. Uh, it's a fairly large slide stop. And then you have your takedown right here, your takedown pin. Uh, but one of the things I really like that they've done is the slide. Uh, now this is a stainless steel slide, but it has a black nitride finish on it. At least that's what I can tell. I mean, it looks that way. It has that sheen to it. And it just has a very nice look. Uh, up to me, a huge upgrade over the original CPX. And they've probably gone with this finish on the CPX. Uh, also, your slide cuts here. Uh, they're very angled, so it allows you to grab it. Uh, and being a really short slide, uh, it's important to have that little bit of extra to pull back. And now we have front slide serrations. Uh, it's funny, you know, there's no Picatinny rail, but on the CPX now, they have a couple of models that have Picatinny rails. It's a very short two-slot pick rail. So Sky is doing moving up, adding up. I don't know if you ever watched the old Jeffersons, but moving on up to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> now we have the Crimson Trace CTS 1500. Uh, guys, it's, it's held up really well. One thing you notice is with the CTS sight, there is a notch, and it does co-witness with that front sight. But when I was on the uh, website for Sky, I was just doing some research, and their models now actually have a sight that's retained. Uh, so this model must have been one of the early ones. And so they must have moved the sight up just a touch, and that way it allows for that sight to fit. This does fit the Glock 43 sights, so you have a ton of different options for that. Now we have a cut in the slide, and this actually allows you, when you bring the slide into slide lock, to be able to access your takedown pin. The barrel is 3.1 inches, it is stainless steel, and it has what they call the Roebuck Quad Lock. Uh, now that's their four points of contact that lock the barrel into the slide. And so that really allows for it to be really tight in the slide. And it's part of what Joe Roebuck put together. Now, I'm going to recommend a video uh, that I watched on the Sky website. And it's the story of Sky Pistols. And it's really excellent. So I'm going to have it annotated up here. You just want to check it out because it really gives you a lot of details about Sky and their facility really their equipment, what they do. I mean, they really go all out to buy the best equipment. And then the things that they want to do to produce these faster, they produce actually the tools. They have a whole section. In fact, they're going to start their own business of building tools. And so that to me lends a lot of credibility to the Sky Firearms. Now the CPX again has that long double action trigger pull, which I was not a big fan of, but a lot of people like it. And sometimes I've been looking through the comments, especially when I did my first DVG1 video. Uh, the review, there were a lot of comments in there of people saying, I've shot this many rounds through my Sky CPX and it just does phenomenally well. Uh, so, you know, it's just according to what you like. And some people like that longer double action trigger pull if they don't have a frame safety. But frame safeties are an option to some of the pistols. Uh, you'll notice there's not one here. Uh, we do have that flat face trigger. We have a rounded off trigger guard. And all the edges are smooth. And it's one of the things about, especially when you get into budget firearms, uh, you know, there's a lot, little bit more sharper edges because it's just expensive to do all that cutting and to chamfer and to finish off different pieces. But you'll notice right here at the barrel, I mean, it's been very well polished and beveled down and it doesn't have those really sharp lines to it. 
And it's just one of those things that really impresses me because I know that making a budget firearm, that's some of the steps that typically a lot of companies cut. But 98% of the parts in the Sky Pistols are made right there in-house, except for the springs. And most companies actually buy springs from those guys who really know what they're doing. Now with the flat face trigger, I just want to show you the trigger pull action. Uh, we have just some take up. It's not a long take up. And then we have a little bit of resistance and then we have a nice break. It's not super crisp, but it definitely is doable. Right there's your reset. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge and brown ales. Four pounds, two ounces. Four pounds, seven ounces. Uh, it's actually not a bad trigger. And when it comes to plus P ammo, uh, according to their manual, it says that you can shoot plus P, you just shouldn't shoot a steady diet. One of the things about any pistol is if you're shooting a lot of plus P, it is gonna wear and tear on the parts. Now these do come in a number of different colors. Uh, they do a number of different frame colors. They do a steel, stainless steel kind of finish, and then they do different frame colors. Uh, at one time, pink was their most favorite. That's kind of tapered down because a lot of females are coming into gun shops and this is one pistol that they're looking at, mainly because of the price. But now Sky, it is again, a budget friendly firearm. And there are some people that have had issues with these handguns. Uh, for us personally, with the CPX, with the first DVG-1, we had no problems with malfunctions. I mean, it was very reliable. Uh, with the DVG-1 RD, uh, the really, and we'll show you at the range, the only problems we had was the slide not holding back on the last round. And it was just one of the magazines. So uh, I really didn't do a lot of uh, investigating to see if there was a little bit of a difference. But this, I think, is the magazine that won't hold the slide back after the last round. And so you really have to push it up to get it to lock back. And so that was really one of the only issues we had as far as a malfunction. I want to thank Fioki for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA. Uh, this stuff is really reliable and accurate. And we've been using this now for about three years. We also appreciate Lula loaders. <laughs> Definitely these things save our thumbs. Guys, when it comes to the range, um, I was really impressed with the way this shot over the CPX. Uh, I really like the trigger in this, being flat faced, but being striker fire. Uh, and really, it's got a good trigger in it. Uh, and honestly, it's just small, but yet you feel like you've got a real grip on the pistol when you're shooting it. While it has that shorter barrel, it's a very lightweight pistol. A lot of times they can be overly snappy. Um, this one, it does have some recoil to it, but it's very controllable. And I think that has a lot to do with the way they've designed the grip. Uh, with the finger grooves in the front, uh, it makes it just really fits in your hand. But as far as reliability, we didn't have any malfunctions. I mean, we shot through a ton of ammunition. And I've had this, again, since December, so we've taken it out to the range a few times and really put some rounds through it. But we did have two different issues. One was one of the magazines just didn't tend to hold the slide back on the last round. Uh, and then we had fairly erratic ejection patterns when it came to the ejection. I mean, it was a little bit here and there. Most of them would go to the right, but some of them actually would go and could move over to the left. And so it just may be that the extractor needs to be tuned some. But overall, as far as reliability and something that could save your life, um, definitely this is reliable when it comes to firing the round. Then with the red dot sight, it allows you to really get on target quickly. It's one of the big pluses and accurately because you're just looking at one dot instead of the sights. But also again, with that notch in the back, you can look and see your front sight. So it gives you a sight if you need it. But that red dot really works well. And the Crimson Trace did great. All right, guys, when it comes to disassembly, we're gonna drop our magazine, check the chamber. Uh, go ahead and put your slide into slide lock, and then right here is your takedown lever. Now, you, this actually, you need to have some kind of tool. You can use a shell casing, actually, and you just pull this out. Uh, and then it comes out all the way, and it does detach from the firearm. And then 
We're going to drop our slide and then let it come forward. Because it is striker fire, you have to pull the trigger to disengage the striker. We have an all metal guide rod and we have dual springs, shorter spring on the back and then the larger flat spring on the front. And then we pull out our barrel. Really good quality. I mean, again, guys, we have shot this thing quite a bit. It's just a well-made, well-finished barrel. Uh, when it comes to the slide, uh, you know, it does have wear marks where we have been firing it, but on the interior and in those areas that won't be affected, I mean, it, it's very well done. And again, guys, they have a really state-of-the-art facility. Now, one thing that I do like about it is that it does have rails that go all the way down, uh, and that gives you a lot of slide-to-frame contact. And so this is just going to be and allow you to have a, a more smooth ride when you're firing the guns. It's just going to give it a little more stability. Most of your polymer striker fire pistols have really small little rail sections. And while that works, and it's fine. I mean, the Glocks, I mean, there's not another gun that's as or more reliable than the Glock. And it's got those short rails. But there's something about these longer rails that just add to that frame to slide fit. But as you can see, pretty simple design. Now when it comes to reassembly, drop in your barrel, put in your recoil spring and guide rod, and just line it up to the back of your barrel. Now we're going to bring it over our frame. You want to bring it back, drop your barrel, line that up. Now one of the things about it, the barrel sometimes will need to be lined up, and you just want to get it to where it's in the center of the locking block. So we're going to take our takedown lever and with the crescent down, go ahead just like this, just go ahead and press it in. And then we're going to release and now we're back in business. The one thing about the barrel with the quad lockup, sometimes the barrel can fit really close and so you want to be able to drop that down just a little bit and then it'll line up. If it doesn't line up right the first time. Now the price of the DVG1 RD is $299. That does not include the Crimson Trace sight. If you get it without the optics cut, it's $289 retail. So there's not really a lot of difference in price between the two. With the CPX, uh, those are as low as $239 retail. So at market price, typically you get them for less. And so a very reasonable firearm. Again, the CPX does have a 380 version as well. Now, as far as pros and cons, uh, fit and finish is really well done. Uh, you know, it is a budget firearm, but honestly, the slide, very nice finish on it. The frame and the grip, I mean, it's got just a little bit of thinness. The way they've cut the edges right here and at the front, even with the finger grooves, seems to be a decent little gun. Uh, the flat face trigger has a good trigger in it. Uh, and of course, you've got your options for your red dot, front and rear cocking serrations, stainless steel, slide, and barrel. And so it's going to give it a really nice finish. Again, with the current models, it does retain that back sight, or I would give that a con, because I really like to have my sights intact on the pistol. Now, reliability was excellent. Uh, you know, we didn't have any kind of malfunctions as far as firing the pistol. Uh, but one thing we did have was one of the magazines, again, wasn't holding back the slide at the end of an empty magazine. And that is a little bit of a con. Uh, also, the ejection pattern is a little bit here and there, uh, consistently to the right, but then some would kind of dribble out. Something that Glock has a problem with, for that matter. Uh, but not. it seemed to be a little bit more exaggerated and just a little distracting more than anything. And really, having to pull the pin all the way out, uh, I would rather it kind of retain itself in while I'm disassembling the firearm. So that is definitely something that, you know, I'm just not a big fan of. But overall, um, I think that the handgun itself is, for a budget-friendly handgun, this is a good choice. Again, made down in Daytona Beach, Florida, and there are a lot of these guns out on the market for good reason. And guys, if you're looking for that budget firearm, uh, the sky is one to definitely take a look at. So guys, if you're looking for a handgun that just won't break the bank, uh, the DVG-1 is definitely a great option. Uh, and then you've got the DVG-R1 RD if you want to put on that red dot. With gun prices going up and up, it's nice to see these options. But also, you might want something to throw in your tackle box. You might want something in your car that you can carry as a backup. And the Sky Series pistols make an excellent option for that. And again, we appreciate GetZone.com for connecting us with Sky 
and providing us this DVG-R1 RD for this review. GetZone.com is a strong Second Amendment friendly video platform, and so check it out. Guys, I've been an entrepreneur for most of my adult life, uh, whether having small businesses or just a side gig. And tax time has always been a nightmare. Tax Titans is a free marketplace that connects taxpayers to vetted tax professionals nationwide. They'll get you the quotes you need to find the right tax pro for you. And being tax professionals, they know all the laws to be able to minimize your tax liability. Tax Titans is nationwide. It's a veteran-owned company based right here out of South Carolina. Now go to tax-titans.com, use referral code SUIT00, and set up your free profile to find the right tax pro for you. And there'll be a link down below in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. like that. Why is that doing that funky weird sound? The Sky DVR, the Sky DV, David versus Goliath, DVG. The Sky DVR1 RD. Let's check it out. Let's check. Now we have the, we have the, um,